it might just be me, but I'm a complete achievement junkie. Really? That's what drives me with all this. Like I like, like to grow and build and feel like mm. I'm doing more stuff. And Today we're at Hawk Media headquarters. Hawk Media is a marketing agency that has worked with some of the biggest companies like Verizon, Barstool Sports, Crocs, Casamigos, Red Bull, and many, many more. And right now I'm about to meet up with the visionary and CEO, Eric Huberman. He's gonna show me around the office of this marketing giant that's valued at over $150 million and talk about how he built this from a startup from the ground up. Let's go in and see for ourselves. What's up, dude? Look at this guy, man. Good to finally meet up in person. Yeah, seriously. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah man. so this is Dang, it. Nice, man. Yeah. This is beautiful. Thank Look you. Look at this, Sebastian. Oh, okay, you got the gong? Talk yeah, to me about gotta this. do this, it. This is the sales gong, huh? Exactly. Oh, no, that's the sales gong. Oh, wow. What's this, like a little mini? That was the original one, and you know, we had to step everything up. Oh, wow. Look at this, dude. This is nice. And when did you hit the Ink 5000? Every, it was six years in a row. Wow. From the moment you started? Oh, okay. No, so no, we're was, 10 years. So 28. But you can't. Yeah, you can't, or we skipped a year. We forgot to apply one year is really what it is. So we should have added seven years, but you can't apply until you're, I think, three or four years in business. So. Really? Yeah. Wow. So was it all remote before? No, we, we were remote uh, post-COVID. Pre-COVID we weren't, and then post-COVID we were remote for three years, and then a year ago moved into like what I call their training wheels office. It was like just a, it was a quarter the size, yeah. just a little like warehouse. And then this popped up and I was like, well, we, if we can make it work, and yeah, now we're, we're here. We signed a five-year lease on this. So That's beautiful, we'll man. We'll be here for a while, yeah. That's awesome. You guys are valued at, you know, 150 million from what I've seen online, mm -hmm. and it's like companies that are doing nine figures, it's usually you have in-person office and a remote. I've, I've, I've uh -huh. seen that. Yep. I prefer an office. I think that you yeah. get, like, I mean, I, we were joking about it today. Right now, my business partner is here. Or they, he's actually based in Boise. The just amount you can get done in a couple hours in person versus mm -hmm. weeks or months not, yeah. it's like, that's why we end up on planes a lot, flying to each other. And, yeah. But like, our Hawk AI is our software yeah, business. He's doing really well. Our head of marketing works here, our head of sales, and our sales director are there. And then for the business partner, he's more of like the behind the scenes yeah. operator. Yeah, it's a, yeah. We've run a few other companies together. Yeah, okay. Oh, so, you, so before 2014, when you started Hawk Media, you already knew him. No, yeah, we, I started a music company in 20, 2009 that he took no over way. in 2011. What kind of music? It was uh, basically business coaching for musicians. So uh, we think master class for the music industry, yeah. working with independent artists. Back then too, yeah. like that was- That was awesome. We raised a million bucks, got it yeah. to profitability, did well, but I knew it was never gonna be that big. So I hired him to take over and then I started two e-com companies, sold them, started this, yeah. called him and said, I think there's a lot of opportunity here. You might wanna come join me on this. And that's wow. how it took off. Dude, how did you even land? Like, cause a lot of people are gonna be watching this like beginner yeah. entrepreneurs and stuff, but sure. also that's like entrepreneurs that are doing millions of dollars as well. Mm -hmm. like, with agencies, the number one question is always client acquisition, right? Did you, did, sure. it, did it just land? Like, yeah, I mean, at the, I mean, 2014, it was easy. Yeah. I mean, well, and it was easy for me because I had built the credibility. I think my opinion is most agencies struggle because they don't actually know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> so like, if you're starting an agency and you don't have a background in marketing and yeah. you had success in it, oh, yeah. what are you doing? It's yeah. like, it, again, it's like being a dentist and you've never fixed a tooth. Like, well, that's not going to work out very well. Very yeah. long. You might be able to talk a few people into opening their mouth, but it's the same kind of thing. So I found really early, like there was so much bullshit in our space that yeah. if I was able to just, I had the credibility that everyone wanted to see. Like I built and sold two good quality e-commerce companies that everybody in, in town knew. And then once I signed a few clients, I did good work for them. Yeah. And then it just went and it's like, go, go figure reputation and doing what you say you're going to do. Yeah. Go a long way. But yeah. That's why I see it with agencies all the time where they struggle because they're not good. Yeah. And like your work product, your quality, like that's where you, if not, you're going to just churn through clients and be on a hamster wheel and eventually your reputation is going to run out. And we have the opposite, which is yeah. nice, which is the once in a while we do have an angry client or someone that says, bad mouths us. We have so much good reputation that they get shut down without us even saying anything. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, we're bad. Look at the list of cred credentials we have. Like, yeah. We, you know, your clients come to back yeah. you up and you're social Correct. proof, your trust, yeah. everything. And you need that because yeah. you're in a space that it shouldn't be subjective, but it is. Meaning yeah. like people can feel whatever they want to feel. <laughs> and so you're going to have people that naysay, but if the majority of them are, you're screwed. Yeah. If it's here and there, which is going to happen, then you're not yeah. as bad. Yeah, exactly. My favorite thing is, I think we have like a couple bad Google reviews. Yeah. And every time someone will be looking to work with us and they'll be like, hey, what about these reviews? And I'm like, let's pull up your company. And they're like, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's see yeah. what you got going yeah. on behind the scenes. Because like nobody gets away without some angry person yeah. becoming a customer. When you first started Hawk, like back when you and your business partner, when you're like, yo, I, I, this, could be, this could become something, did you see 
office. No. Did you see? Okay. No, no, talk um, no it was reactive in the beginning, really? which worked really well. It's just working. Like you, you just sold the e-com and no. now it's like, this just is keep working. going. Just keep going. Uh, wait, that's working double down. I had like the first four years kind of mapped out where I thought I knew where we were going, but I didn't really like, I didn't really pick my head up. I just went for it. Like it wasn't like, oh, I've got this grand vision. We're going to be this huge company. We have tons of people. Like I didn't really care. Yeah. It was just like, I'm making money right now yeah. and it's working and people are happy and I'm, and it's fun. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where I came from. That's that's pretty much like I think that overwhelms a lot of people too. It's like yeah. they think that everybody has this huge vision, and it's like I, you know, and some people do, but it's like yeah. you kind of just keep doubling down on what's working, and you yeah. just keep pushing yeah. the button until it just stops. But yeah. if you don't stop, it's never going to stop. Really. Yep. So agreed. Yeah. So show me some of your favorite things that you've got in here. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's fun is we've won a lot of awards of the years, so actually having all what of What awards are these? Okay, so I've never seen these before. They're all different. I mean, this is, you know, we get asked to apply to different awards. Best affiliate marketing campaign. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Best digital marketing campaign. And is that, is that the... Best Tuck digital marketing. So Tucky's the company that gives you these awards. No, that's the company we won for. Oh, okay, forget, so what's Tucky? Oh, for, uh, I forget what these guys are called, to be honest. Do you mind if I touch it? No, you're good. Wow, look at this, dude. This is, and that's heavy, too. Look at that. These were based off like quality of work and stuff. We submitted a ton of work and what we were doing and just like an overview on the agency. Wow. Okay. And they just took all of it into consideration. Yeah. They're like, damn, this and is Every award's different. Good, they good all ask for work. different things. We have a, you know, we have a PR team that focuses on getting us press, getting, wow. submitting for awards, doing all these things because you kind of need to continue with that relevancy and that trust build. Like, yeah. again, it's all like people are, people know they need marketing. It's why us? Yeah. Like, I don't want to work with people that are questioning whether they need marketing or not, but it's like, why are they going to pick me versus everyone else out there? And that's the constant, not struggle, but mm -hmm. uh, focus of, especially me as a founder, like yeah. that's why we do a lot of things we do is like that proof point. And it has to be real. Like the yeah. nice thing is it can't just be a facade of like, you should work with us because like these awards, frankly, like everyone asks, how do I win so many awards? I'm like, yeah. well, step one, apply. Yeah. Like that, that yeah. helps. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and, but like building Hawk AI, where yeah. it's like now we have a whole AI system that we can optimize campaigns way faster wow. than anyone can, have way more visibility in the market than anyone can. We have Hawk Ventures, which allows us to invest and fund the rest of the MarTech that we need, which makes us more efficient and more innovative constantly. We're yeah. always incorporating new technology, like all these things that really feed into how do we be the best marketing company on the planet? And our whole mission thesis was, let's be the best at what we do, but really easy to work with. Yeah. Because that was the other part that I saw when we were starting was there are good agencies out there, but yeah. they're all pain in the ass to work with. They yeah. want long contracts, high minimums. They only want to work with the Fortune 2000. I'm like, well, why can't we work with small and medium businesses too and be great at what we do? Like, wow. why is that not a thing? Yeah. So that's been a part of a big part of our success. Which one, uh, if any of these here, maybe not, has been your favorite award? I didn't even know there was a room back there until I just saw yeah, it. Right. The awesome. Telly's fun, because that's a very legit award for the commercial we filmed for Hawk Media. Mm. This was a fun one to win. Your outsource CMO, wow. Yeah, we did a commercial for Hawk that still holds water today, which was Was fun. that the commercial of you in the old office with the kids? Yeah, exactly. Kids? Yeah, so that was an award if for If you that. haven't watched that one, you gotta go watch that commercial. That I was love super that fun. commercial. I'd say Forbes Under 30 was probably my most proud one. Now yeah. it's kind of, I think, gotten a little washed out, but like I was a year younger than everyone growing up. So like I wasn't the, I, I was athletic, yeah. but I was not competitive because I yeah. was tiny. I was a head shorter than everyone. So like I wasn't the guy stacked with trophies in my room. So like when I got that award, it's like, I felt like I got the trophy, the top trophy for the thing I was, which was yeah. a young executive business person so yeah. that meant a lot at the time and then since then I got 40 under 40 from uh, CSQ magazine I got four under 40 from uh, the Ad American Advertising Association oh, nice one okay. of them, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that one, oh, yeah those are pretty fun too that and this there. this is hilarious okay from one advertiser to another you got to respect this if you don't know what this thing is then you don't like ads yeah the bug assault guess who does their marketing Hawk Media. <laughs> no way. And you actually have one too. Yeah. That's true proof of content. They work with us. You love the client. Yeah, I know, it's fun. My, and I watch my, the sad truth is we get flies in here because we like leaving the doors open. So I watch him walk around with that thing all day. This is my office. It's being taken right now, but. Okay. Yeah. Kensington Library. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just... A couple other offices here, pull up bar. This used to be a little gym. Um, but yeah, it's fun. Oh, that's a pull up bar? Yeah. Go pump some. Yeah. Pump some out, this. man. So, dude, this is nice. You can do a little dead, dead hang too. Yep. Get a little relaxed. How many you got? At Two. least 20. At least 20, all right. Three, four. Oh, and oh. 18 and a half. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Thanks for That's pushing. That's good, yeah. 
Oh, I was, dude, that's pissing me off. I'm gonna, it's gonna make me mad. <laughs> wow, look at this, yeah. Sebastian. Come in here, check this out. It's a nice quiet room. To if hang. your company doesn't have a meditation room, then I don't yeah, know exactly. what you're doing. And then we have all this, which is great. because. And it's funny how you laid it out. Pull a bar to meditation to take yeah. some deep breaths. We've got out a couple of guys have like a daily push-up routine up here. I think it's 100 push-ups a day they gotta do. That's awesome. Oh, honestly, you'll see people up here hanging out on the couches a lot with their laptops. <laughs> We always call their office the most comfortable place to be uncomfortable. We're like, oh. we don't care about like suit, be at your desk, sitting upright, which obviously is antiquated anyways now, but even <laughs> 10 years ago when we were talking about it, we're like, fuck all that. Like wear your workout clothes, I don't care, but like you're gonna work hard. Yeah. But, like do it, you know, none of the other stuff really mattered to me. When it comes to the branding, right? So the hawk yeah. on the hat. Yep. Was it just your favorite animal? Was it just something that just Yeah, I mean to an extent. I grew up in a Ohio small town north of yeah. here and uh, we had a Native American chief, Chumash chief, tell me when I was seven that hawks were my spirit animals, red-tailed hawks. And so when I went to name Hawk Media, uh, originally I was going to call it Growth Hacker Group, is when growth hacking was starting to become a thing. And a buddy of mine was like, I just signed a contract with Walmart. They will never put their name on a contract that says hacker on yeah. it. So like, keep it simple. I was like, that's good advice. And I literally just was like, what do I like? What's simple? And I was like, I like, you know, I've always liked hawks. I like, you know, the idea of it, et cetera. Hawk without the E was taken on GoDaddy, Hawk, wow. Hawk Media without the E, so I threw an E on it. I was like, yeah, great. Again, I didn't have a vision of building this, so I was like, yeah, I'll just keep it simple. Called a college friend of mine and gave her a few hundred bucks to make me a little logo. Yeah. She nailed it. Pretty, like, I think she gave me four options, and this was one of them. And nice. I'm like, because I told her I want an icon, yep. an iconic Hawk yep. landing on the K, so Hawk Media on the There back. we go. And I was like, this is what I want it to look like. I want it lowercase, blah, blah, blah. And she sent me that one. I was like, perfect. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm always, I'm always curious about the branding side of things. Yeah. It's a huge thing. And but it's a, honestly, my view of naming and branding and all that, like, you make the brand what you make it. Mm. So it doesn't really matter yeah. other than, like, what's a Google? What's a Facebook? What's a Amazon? Yeah. Like, it doesn't really matter. It's more about what you turn it into. I just believe that it, to make it easier on yourself, the icon should be iconic. Like, yep. think of it as a religious symbol. Yep. And that's what, the, like, every time I wear this hat, which is why I wear it so much now, is like, everyone's like, that's fucking cool. What is that? <laughs> I'm like, that, it's, it's nice. So, yeah. we, and that was the vision from the beginning is I want it to be a symbol that people want to rock, that want to wear. No one's going to get the tattoo of the marketing agency <laughs> like you do Liquid Death, but like, Liquid are we? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. they. Uh, but I still love that there's like a icon that more my own people, the staff, yeah. the employees. Like you want to fly the flag, you want to like it feels like a symbol you can get behind. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's beautiful. Talk to me about the book, right? Yeah. Everybody knows. I mean, me personally, I was a huge fan. Of obviously, Ogilvy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, OG in the space. Yep. The the Godfather of advertising. Some say. Yep. Confessions of an advertising man. Yep. Wrote the book. Obviously used it as a lead magnet almost, if you will, to get more clients. Yep. The moment I saw you drop this, I bought it. I read every, read every word of it. I still tell people about this one right here, which is the actual marketing tripod. Yeah. This thing, the way yep. you explained it is just so, so perfect. So like, Thank you. how long did it take you to develop that method specifically? Yeah. Because that's what is the foundation of Hawk totally. Media. And that, that is, it basically, I was already doing it with my own companies, but then with Hawk, the biggest job is to articulate what we're doing for clients. Like yeah. whether we're selling into a client or yeah. we're working with them, we got to tell them what we're doing. And so that was a big part of the job. And so I found myself trying to simplify the way we explained it yeah. and not just go into jargon and make it super complicated. Be like, no, it's just think about it this with this. Yeah. And so that's where that came from was like when I was talking to clients and thousands and thousands and thousands of companies we were working with. And then I started doing a bunch of public speaking about marketing and I distilled it down to that. And then it became yeah. a talk I did a bunch of times and I'd go and speak around stages. And then, you know, six years into Hawk, I got approached by a guy who's like, hey, have you thought about writing a book? And I'm like, I actually had already worked on a different book that I decided I didn't want to put out. But then uh, I was like, yeah, I've, you know, I think I could distill what I've been, you know, basically just our marketing methodology. Yeah. It's like, well, I can help you do it pretty easily. And so then there was, it was a great, easy way to write the book. Yeah. Marketing, it's a whole different story. Well, regardless of having a marketing agency, doing the book tour is a lot. Really? But, oh, yeah. It's grueling, actually. I've talked to a few writers that agree. Like, that process of... because. The first week book sales yeah. are what Matt, is what really? gets me this little logo. The USA Today yeah. bestseller. Or any bestseller list, you, it's about the first week, maybe two. Gotcha. So like, it is brutal leading up to that to make sure that everything's firing on all cylinders. Because uh, like most companies, you make a couple mistakes and things. Yeah. You can pivot, change like this. It all matters in one week. There's no, mm. there's no data. There's no optimization. You just gotta go. You just gotta promote it everywhere yeah. as hard as you can to yeah. every client and get them to try yeah. to buy it as well. Yep. And how much? How, what's the even qualifications for USA Today? Like it's just like the top selling. Copies? It's yeah. How many books you sold? Wow. I sold thirty thousand copies. I think it was twelve thousand in the first week. I think was the number wow. of thirteen thousand. Yeah. Beating myself from yesterday's. I don't care about other people. Like competition wise, like I could care less. I'm happy for 
like the, our biggest competitors in LA, I'm friends with all of them. Like, really? It's like, yeah, we, I, I'm happy for them when they're successful. It's not a big deal. God forbid we lose a client here and there to each other. It's more about like, I want to know that I beat myself. Now, if they're standing, truly standing in the way of me being successful, that and I get a little different, but it's like, it's more <laughs> about me and what I'm building. And so at the times, like business isn't linear. So the yeah. times when let's say you're having more struggles in work, if I have something personally I'm gotcha. achieving at least, it just helps me stay in the game. Wow, that's a huge, huge tip because yeah. it seems like when most people's business maybe isn't going in the right direction, they tend to actually take their foot off their personal life because they, right. spend, they let it stack. Nope. Where you're like, okay, well, clearly this is a little bit of a different season, but let me work double on myself yep. to get Well, back. it's not even double, it's just yeah. maintain. It's like, just have like, so like, you know, I'm, triathlon in a week that I, I committed to at the beginning of the year and I'm a big snowboarder so I was like I'll start training in March so I got to find one in mid to late summer because I was snowboarding uh, and training for snowboarding during the, that season and then I already signed up for a half marathon in November because I wanted to maybe do a full marathon in yeah. March and so I just keep this like personal thing going yeah. I also set like training different types of like hobby goals like I'm gonna learn piano or I'm gonna learn how to do this or you know now I'm working on a marksmanship with shooting and, no way yeah it's fun um, you saw the guy in the Olympics. He saw the guy in the Olympics. Yeah, the 100%. one with, with just the glasses. Which, by the way, he's what fifty two. Yeah, yeah, the like, guy thirty seven. I'm like, I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna go to the Olympics. Like, <laughs> no, that's not, I, I've been doing it for a little while, but that was definitely a thought of like, wait, you don't need to be that athletic <laughs> for this sport. I got to yeah. figure this out. So yeah. honestly, you know, there's things like that that I just like put a target on of like what's something that I can feel like I achieved something new. Mm. Got my pilot's license, my captain's wow. license, all these other things. So it's that's always been very helpful for me in keeping mm -hmm. in the game. What have you found to be like a big thing with retaining talent today? Because a lot of people have flexibility, work from home. Yep. They have a lot of things they could do, yep. different side projects and all that. Yeah, I've found that, you know, I think you have to run the company you want to run and mm -hmm. get you'll get the people you get. I think people like, there's so many people in the world that like, I'm not really worried about finding, like we're not being anything crazy or unreasonable here, like saying let's work in an office together. <laughs> like. Um, but I will say, like I saw a poll about a month ago that uh, actually surprised me, which it was, if would you rather work 25 hours a week and make 125 grand a year or work 70 hours a week and make 300 grand a year? And I was like, no brainer, 70 hours a week make 300 grand. Like I wanna work like most want so, live, so I can live like most can't. Like that 100% drives me and I would definitely do that. And I expected the majority of people to wanna work 25 hours a week instead of 70. Uh, but what percentage do you think of people would rather work 25 hours a week? At least 80%. 80%? Yeah, it was 92. Wow, yeah. Or sorry, 98.2. 98.2, excuse me. Wow. So, um, yeah, so just under 2% of people will actually want to put in the work wow. to make the money. And I'm like, okay, so I need to find that cohort. Yeah. And I need to make an opportunity where they can, but I want to find the people that want to grind, that want to work hard. And I think when you set up your culture and you set expectations that way, I think you'll attract those people and you'll scare off the other people. Mm. And that's okay. It depends what you want to build. I think. Other people, you know, I saw an interview with Eric Schmidt yesterday that mm -hmm. he was at Stanford this week speaking, and he was talking about like Google's lost its edge because they became more concerned with giving people work from home and work life balance and vacation than they did with innovating. Mm. And um, I hear that. That brings up a good point because it's almost basically exactly like when you manage client expectations, yeah. client relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you have at this point thousands of clients, mm -hmm. th multiple thousands of clients that you've worked with, and like I'm sure some clients are like that too, yeah. where it's like they come to you with unrealistic expectations, yep. and you kind of have to reset them. I had them a in the client come way. to us yesterday and tell me they want to launch their company. They have 90 grand and they expect to do, I think it was $30 million in the first six months. <laughs> and I was like, that's going to be tough. So many, we don't do that much spec work. Like mm. you want to hire us. We have enough credibility, like hire us. Okay. Like we're not going to go do a bunch of free work and yeah. hope that you want to work with us. Cause we've been taking advantage on that side too, that we're like, no, like, you know who we are. We we're very capable. And if we're going to, we'll go figure something out, but we're not going to do it for free. Yeah. Um, and so it's usually just presenting ourselves and, you know, thankfully we, you know, we bring on 40 to 50 clients a month. Mm -hmm. So that's a, over the past 10 years. So we've had 5,000 companies that have worked with wow. over 5,000 have worked with Hawk Media and there's different reasons, different ones are exciting. There's the big win of like, we signed Nike or we signed, like we brought on giant bicycles this week. Oh, we brought on the Harvard Business Review. We brought on Bloomberg this week. Like these, those are great fucking yeah. brands. Those are all fun. And like the first time you bring on a big brand that you know, it's fun. But thankfully I started very early. Like yeah. my first client was Bowie Total Fitness. So no it wasn't way. like, you know, and pretty quickly I got Red Bull and Verizon and HP. And so we had big wins pretty quick. And then you realize you like, and we know this, we just did the analysis again. Like we make more money and have more engagement and make more impact with the sort of medium sized brands. The like five to 50 million revenue brands. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. We can add just as much, we can add $50 million to Red Bull's revenue too. 
they just don't give a shit. <laughs> um, so it's just like, you know, we, we still, it's fun, and it, but it is fun to work with the flagship brands too. Yeah. But then there's like individual, like we just, we signed Cali Water a couple months ago and that's been super fun. That's Vanessa Hudgens and Oliver Dravina's oh, wow. uh, Cactus Water Company because we're like using it at our events. We're, the campaigns are going well. They're rolling out in tons of stores. The success is fun. Yeah. And it's also, they made like a healthy version of Capri Sun that now I have my two-year-old daughter drinking wow. Cali Water and like that's been a fun brand. So the win isn't really like you win the pitch anymore just yeah. because frankly it happens 50 times a month so yeah. it's not like oh my god we yeah. won the client because i know that's th that's when it starts mm. it's not like yeah exactly we won right? we're done yeah like it's now i gotta get to work now you gotta fulfill and, and that's where my head has always gone is like yeah exactly you gotta fulfill and keep it and all that well let's talk about bally bally right so this yeah. was the first client you signed for hawk media yep. back when you first started and that did that you did you mentioned did it kind of fall into your lap after the e-com sale uh yeah, very much so. Okay. So I met the guy and he wanted to build an online activewear brand. I was okay. running an online activewear brand. And he said, hey, can I pay you to uh, make, give me a business plan? I was like, sure, I can put a business plan together. Obviously, I know the business. Yeah. And so he asked me how much I'd charge. And I threw out basically what I made in three months, meaning like with my three months salary that I was able to make, like, and I was making decent money, I just threw out this big number. in my heart was going, I was like, there's no fucking way. <laughs> and he goes, can I pay you half up front, half after? I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, great. And I said, I need a month and a half, though, to make it look like I was going to do the work. And I did it in a weekend um, and made great money. And then he ended up deciding, instead of using that business plan, could he buy my company? Wow. So he bought Ellie. And then he said, now I want you to come work for me. I was like, absolutely not. He's like, oh, I'm like, I'll come consult one day a week. And he said, I want you to consult three days a week in my office. And I'm like, can I have my own office so I can do some other work, too? He's like, sure. I'm like, great. And I ended up throwing out a number that was basically what four times what I made an hour mm. for three three part days a week. And yeah. he said, done. I'm like, okay. And so all of a sudden I'm working three days part time a week, making way more money than I ever made in my life. Still had four days because I was 26. Yeah. Just had four other days a week. So I, I didn't care about my weekends. I started bringing on other consulting clients and figuring out other things to do. And that was the birth of Hawk. Wow. So it was like, I had enough money to pay my bills and then some with my first client. And then I signed another one, another one, another one. And all of a sudden I'm making four times as much money as a consultant yeah and uh living really well at 26 and that's when i started hiring people and going oh there's something bigger here yeah wow it sounds like from that story alone it's just like very clear that you already knew your worth and value I was just gonna go there i i didn't i learned it wow I, I realized and now i see this in hindsight where it's like the amount of money i saved that guy in terms of like that business plan mm. and what he could have had to do to and then like helping him navigate for a second like I was totally worth every dollar he spent on me. But to me, I was like, I was used, you know, I was not used to being offered that, but it wasn't about what's market rate for me. It's what money can I make him? Mm. And so that was a very eye-opening experience that allowed me to then grow this whole thing. was yeah. like, well, what else would he have spent on? How would we save that? How much money can we make? Like, it's the same thing when people, and you'll, I'm sure, deal with this too. When we're talking to somebody about our percentage of ad spend that we charge, yep. we charge on the media side, and they're going like, let's say they're spending a hundred grand a month. Yeah. And let's say we charge 10% just to make it yep. easy. So it's 10 grand a month. And they go, you know, we found someone else that'll do it for seven. <laughs> like three grand savings. They're like, yeah. I'm like, so what do you need your returns to be on your marketing? Which let's just be real. If it's not four times plus over LTV, like it's not going to work. So let's just say four times. Okay. So you need me to spend a hundred grand a month and make you 400 grand. Yeah. And you're going to take a risk on someone that wants to charge you seven instead of 10. So you're gonna save three grand and risk that 400. Like, do you understand the decision-making process? You're trying to save three grand right now versus picking the best opportunity to make that 400. I promise you, I can make three grand more from for you than this other person. Like this is, you're gonna outsource yeah. it to India and you're an idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. is stupid that we're even having this conversation. Yeah. And people don't realize that. So the whole knowing your worth thing, it's like understand the value you're creating and like, why are you talking about my fee right now? Yeah. Like, if I don't perform, if yeah. I don't hit that 400, now fire me. Like, I, yeah. no, you can't. You can't afford to have me. Yeah. But like, if I can hit your numbers, you're gonna make a decision over a few thousand bucks. When we're talking about hundreds of thousands. Was it? Was it? Was it always like that? Though, like Bally, uh, Red Bull. Yeah. Like you're you're saying those things for. They those didn't all push back. A lot of the smarter marketers know that. Yeah. So they're they're not gonna make that decision. Like who? Which is know. why you said earlier in the office, you're like, we don't really work with people that need to be sold on marketing. Like no. they already know they need marketing. Yeah. yeah. Why us over someone else? And if gotcha. and again, if it becomes a commoditized cost perspective, then they're not that savvy, and that's yeah. that's a problem. And sometimes we'll work through it, and sometimes yeah. we won't. And we we just had it where like. Uh, someone wanted to build a website with us and they started telling us, well, they found someone in uh, Indonesia to build it way cheaper. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, I, and should I get your product in Indonesia? <laughs> what, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, it's, 
it was just like, and so they're, what are they're, we, yeah, what are we they're gonna build about? their website in Indonesia. I hope it works out for them. 99% of the time yeah. it won't. And yeah. they're gonna waste that money and then come back to us and have spent, you know, half the money they were supposed to spend with us and gotten nowhere. And that happens a lot. The funniest part about that is it reminds me of the quote, and I love this, and you'll appreciate this. I'm sure you've heard this too. It's, there's nothing more expensive than a cheap resource. Exactly. There's yep. nothing more expensive than yep. a cheap resource. Yep. They get the, they get the Indonesian funnel and yeah. it doesn't convert. Exactly. It's like, okay, do your thing. Yeah. And we get that, yeah. Especially when we work with overseas companies, we get that sometimes. The entrepreneur out there, they just started, you know, first time in business, you know, they're bootstrapping it just like you were 2014. Um, number one piece of advice after the last 10 years of growing Hawk Media to be valued at 150 million a year plus. So that person who's like, you know, they, they're just, it's, it's working. They're kind of just figuring it out. Like what would be the number one thing? I mean, I have an idea of what you're gonna say, but what would be the number one piece of advice for them? I'm curious what you think I was gonna say. 70 hour work week, <laughs> I'll work a competition, but also yeah. it takes time. I mean, what you just said there is, is, is key, like 10 years. And yeah. it's, for most people, they can't even fathom working at anything more than one year, yeah. right? Let alone a job for a year. Neither could I though. I, I mean, I think it's, you just look up, like I can't believe it's been this long. Um, it's, yes, I agree with everything you said and that would come out of my mouth. Um, and uh, like, just know it's like, my, the, the thing I need to remind myself of that I think, like thankfully things are great right now, but mm -hmm. like when times are tough, it's the concept of entrepreneurship to me is to work like most wants so you can live like most can't, mm. which means you have to do both. Yeah. So back to the 70 hour work week, yes, you have to work like most won't. And by the way, at this point, back to that 98.2% stat, like that most people don't wanna work hard, like it's true. Like you talk about the 1% as if it's an accident, but it's no, it's like, turns out about 1% of people actually wanna put in the work. Yeah. So it's, it, it is, I don't think it's hard to be successful if you really want it, mm. but you gotta want it, you gotta put in the work, you gotta stick with it, know that it's fucking hard, yeah. You're going, it's not never easy, and there is no finish line. Like I always, we, when thankfully early on we realized this, like you talk about like Tim Cook or mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos or yeah. whoever, you know, the biggest CEOs in the country, they're dealing with like geopolitical problems and getting fucking Congress coming down their neck, talking about imprisoning them and Elon Musk, like, they are dealing with real problems yeah. that not, mine don't compare to. And it's all relative, yeah. but at the same time, like that's what you have to look forward to wow. if you're continuing to build your business. There isn't a point where you're just like, and it's done, yeah. unless, unless you sold, yeah. you're exiting. But to build an exit to sell, build a, if you build a business uh, to sell, I think you generally won't. It's like my favorite, one of my favorite lines, if you don't keep build a company like you're gonna keep it forever, you will. Wow. Because you've gotta build it really solid, really tight, and then someone will wanna buy it all these people that think they're gonna call their exit, it doesn't work out that way. And a lot of people you see selling their companies, they're not what you think. And so it's really important to know, like you have to work hard, but then again, to live like most can't, like if you're going to put in the work, it's, yeah. there's gotta be a reason. And I don't mean it's to buy a Ferrari and all that yeah. shit, that's easy. Like I, I remember I was on stage at a traffic and conversion and I didn't realize I was calling out the whole front row that was sitting there, their VIPs, but I was like, all the people that think that like a Ferrari or Lamborghini is a sign of wealth, like I don't have a single person at fucking Hawk Media that makes less than a monthly payment on a Ferrari. Like, it's stupid. Yeah. I have 250 employees here. I could fire one and buy a Ferrari, but that's just a statement of priorities, not mm. a statement of wealth. Like that's just stupid. Yeah. Unless you love cars and then fucking do it. I don't care. Spend your money on what you want to spend it on. But like that whole symbolism of materialism is really dumb to me. Um, and so for me, it's more about, you know, what is it that's going to drive you to keep you going that you will like, what, what's the intrinsic value here that you really want out of it? Why are you doing this? Mm. Cause if you don't have that, the money will come and go, yeah. but you have to live like most can mm. and do the things that you want to do, whatever that means for you, that allows you to feel motivated and get through the times where it's like, this sucks. Mm. Cause it's going to happen. What was that for you? Like what, what's that why driver behind you? You said it's always constantly beating yeah. your best. But is it, is it something? Yeah, it's more than that. It's yeah. uh, it's experiencing everything life has to offer. Gotcha. It's, and I love growth. That drives me a lot too. But it's, uh, you know, I want to, with business, it's like, that's why I started a fund that's built a software company, did m and was like, I want to try this out. This seems fun. Let's <laughs> fucking do it. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. You start to realize it's no one's that smart. It's a game. Yeah, exactly. You're just playing. And the same thing personally. It's like, that's why I got the pilot sites. It's all these yeah. things. It's like, I want to fucking try wow. that. And you're so, just building your character, your dream character. You're just yeah. leveling up in these different it's areas. It's hundred percent like a video game. Yeah. And that's, yeah. My wife's called that out with me a few times. This whole thing <laughs> feels like a video game to me. And, and even like why wear the whoop and yeah. like gamify my whole yeah. fitness yeah. kind of things and ordering and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's all, it's all the same thing. Last question for the entrepreneur who's already doing a million a year. They've hit seven figures, uh -huh. right? Less than five percent of businesses even make it there. Yep. They want to get to eight figures. What would be your number one piece of advice for them? I think they need a sub partner like my wife that I, when I hit ten million, she's like, you know how many businesses do ten million dollars? Like stop it. She's in private equity. So she's yeah. like, hey, stop. You're nothing. Like. 
It, don't get high on your own supply. Yeah. We did a million in our first year. Like, yeah. thankfully, that was never a big target for us. It was just like that's the start. Yep. Like, I there are many. You, you said less than five percent, but like five percent of businesses. There's a lot of. There's millions of business in the country. There's a lot of million dollar businesses in the country. Mm. So it's, it's. I would just say, but don't like, if that should be a scoreboard, yeah. not the goal. There should be a reason to get to eight. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What is that going to do for you? Because also, by the way, like your profit generally shrinks. Yeah. You're, you know, it's expensive to grow and there's different headaches. And like, you've got to run the business you want to run. If you want to run a really big business, know it's going to be like the moving parts and the craziness is much bigger. Like, you know, we've acquired as of yesterday, 19 companies. We haven't announced the 19th or 18th yet. And like those moving parts allow us to grow and build something really cool. But it is a lot of shit to stay on yeah. top of. Yeah, you just got to be a, you got to have a high stress tolerance. Yeah, and, and want it. Yeah, and want, want it. Enough. Yeah, and if you you can make your life a little easier if you slow it down, but that's again, it's a choice. And that's the part too. It's a choice. choice. Entrepreneurship's a choice. You're not a victim. Never let yourself be like, "Oh god, like I'm be like you chose to be here. Go get a fucking job if you don't want to do it." Like seriously. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I think people need to remember that that they chose to do what they're doing and they can shut it down, walk away, do whatever they want, but yeah. like that that's important too. Eric, thank you so much for doing this, man. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Where could people find you on Instagram? Uh, shout out your handle real quick so they can follow you. Dude, and just add or slash Eric Huberman. There you go. Yeah. Eric Huberman, follow him on Instagram. Subscribe to his YouTube channel, especially the Hawk Media YouTube channel. They yeah. drop a lot of dope content. Go watch that old commercial yeah. from them, from the agency. That's a gold mine. You saw the award in there and uh, all the clients they work with. Eric, thank you so much for doing yeah, this, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. Absolutely.